<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Michael Peters, class of 1990 from the college and the president of the Alumni Board of Governors. And with me is Damon Cates, uh, who's MBA 05 and executive director of the Alumni Association. Uh, we wanted to welcome you all today to Volunteer Caucus. Thank you for getting up bright and early and joining us down in Hyde Park. I uh, want to start with one um, small item that my fellow board members would not be happy if I did not mention, and that is the nominations for the Alumni Awards uh, have been extended to October 17th. So if you have anyone that you think would be befitting of one of the awards, we have seven different awards categories, you have until next week to submit nominations for that. You can do all of that online, alumniandfriends.uchicago.edu. So um, we hope that you'll uh, help us have a great uh, award season this year. The second is nominations for the Alumni Board of Governors, or ABG, uh, are due in mid-December. So if you know of anyone who is interested in being nominated for the board or want to self-nominate, um, you can certainly do that. And all that information is also on our website. <clears throat> so let me start by thanking the advisory committee uh, who put this event together, done a great job. Uh, Max Leichman and Jennifer Lammers, who are co-chairs for the event. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> the, uh, the law school and uh, Dean Gardner, who's with us today for the space. Uh, and the staff, who have worked tirelessly to put this all together in a fairly short amount of time. So thank you all, and thank you all for coming down to Hyde Park. <clears throat> On behalf of the ABG, I also want to thank you for, <clears throat> excuse me, for the many contributions to, to the university. Without you, we wouldn't have 76 clubs around the world, or 11 affinity groups and counting, uh, or the participation in Alumni Weekend that grows every year. And while we encourage each of you to be a volunteer leader, we also s understand that life can get busy. So our goal is to provide the opportunities for alumni to be engaged in all stages of life and at all interest levels as leaders, by attending events and looking to the university as a source for lifelong learning, through networking and building relationships with fellow alumni, or by joining an affinity group. These are just some of the examples of how we, as an alumni community, can contribute to our collective success and the success of the university. Volunteer Caucus is an important element to this success, which is why, is it, what, which is why it's a signature event of the Alumni Board of Governors. It's central to our mission of spreading best practices among alumni volunteers and providing resources and training to make you impactful volunteer leaders. I encourage you to meet the many ABG members in attendance today. A lot of, of course, I don't have my tag. I'm supposed to, but a lot of them have tags that say Alumni Board of Governors. So um, please uh, seek them out. Speak to them about your personal experiences as a volunteer. And understand that the ABG advocates on your behalf to the university administration, so please make your needs and wants known. Or if you have things that, you're particularly, that you particularly like about the way things are going in the alumni community, make that known too, so we can make sure to devote proper resources to those. Today we have over 200 alumni registered to attend from all parts of the university, and I'm particularly pleased to see an increase in attendance from the graduate divisions. With a few exceptions, the volunteer opportunities we're discussing today are applicable throughout the university. Um, so let's start with an overview of what some of those opportunities are. If my clicker works. And it doesn't go up. <laughs> Old school. There we go. <coughs> Many of you probably started your volunteer career through Alumni, uh, alumni Schools Committee, or the clubs, uh, or maybe a reunion committee, but there are a growing number of ways to be active in the alumni community. Over the past few years, the largest growth has been in the creation of class councils and the affinity groups. These organizations allow a class to stay together in non-reunion years, so we're not starting from scratch every five years, or group alumni by interest rather than geographic area or division of the university. These opportunities also allow participation across a broad spectrum of time commitments from a few minutes to a few hours. The best part of this growing network is the expanded leadership opportunities, and several of the sessions today will help you fill one of these roles if that's your desire. These opportunities exist alongside university-sponsored programming, such as the Harper Lectures or the recent conversations with President Zimmer. But regardless of the sponsor, we want to make sure that the programming fits the needs of our alumni community. To do that, 
in our own Chicago way. Several years ago, the Alumni Association started to track engagement. And so now I'll ask Damon to explain how the engagement tracking works and how that impacts you as alumni volunteers. Damon. Sure. Well, good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Damon Cates, and I have the pleasure of serving as the executive director of the university's Alumni Association. One of the best parts of my job, I think, is how often I get to brag about our alumni, whether that's their accomplishments or their volunteerism or their general involvement. And today is no exception for spending a Saturday with us and being connected with the university. We, we really appreciate it. So let me also echo Michael's um, Thanks for being here and thanks for being involved. Um, one of the things that we've been doing for a number of years, actually a little bit before FY09, um, has been tracking what we call go, give, and help. And we are on those three um, tracks trying to encourage alumni to do more of those three things and get more alumni involved in those three areas. So as you can see, um, with um, this bar chart, things are going in the right direction. We have been able to get more people involved, but of particular note, um, in FY12 last year, we had a goal of getting 40% of our alumni to do one of those three things. They're not, we'd like everyone to do all three, but if you do one, you get counted in our numbers. So last year, we crossed the 40% um, threshold and we're on our way to um, a 50% plus one, meaning that over half of our alumni will have um, been involved with going, giving, and helping the university by 2016. Um, I will tell you a little bit of a secret, which is that since this is an insider group, um, one of the challenges that we face within the university is making sure that we get all of this information into the database and that we're recording it. So if you're one of our volunteers that's in the region or helping with an affinity group or um, any other volunteer event where you might have attendees, it actually comes down to that sign-in sheet um, that you're the years um, when, you're, when folks are coming into the event, um, we just really need that data back from you um, or any anecdotal information that you have about people that are attending things because um, we then put it into our database and are able to track that information. So, um, and the same goes with um, volunteerism. So if there are people that you know that are volunteering, um, and even in a sort of an informal way, we would love to know who those people are. So not only that we can track them, but we could also recognize them too. So that's a lot to say that um, I think we're under-reporting a little bit on our numbers, so I think there's even a better story to tell that more than 40% of our alumni are involved and engaged with the university. But, okay. Oh, thanks. I think that just circles that thing. <laughs> Ta-da, 40% plus one. <laughs> there's a lot of animation. I can do this one. <laughs> Ta-da. So um, a couple of the things that we're trying to track in this grid, it'll, it'll fill in, but in the go, give, and help categories, we're really just trying to track anyone that comes to anything. So this is any event, whether it's the book club of Denver or whether it's the Harper Lecture in New York. If you're attending a university-sponsored event, we'd really like to be able to track that and, and make sure that we're recording it. We also, though, spend... Um, an inordinate amount of time too, which you probably all receive regularly, solicitations from the university. Um, so we're also trying to encourage a number of people to give. If you're a college alum, I would like to thank um, and uh, applaud our college alumni because this year we crossed the 40% um, threshold for giving from college graduates. So that is an enormous accomplishment. Um, that puts us in an elite category of alumni support that very few other institutions have. So thank you if you're involved in that effort. Um, we're going to do it again this year, so be prepared for, <laughs> for, for involvement there. And then lastly, as I mentioned, we're also just looking for um, if anyone's volunteering, generally speaking, we would love to be able to track that. So if that's an hour a month or an hour a year, or if you're regularly volunteering on behalf of the university, we're really trying to make sure that we recognize those donors. But in addition to that, we're also really trying to push um, attendance at some of our signature events. So President Zimmer last year went on an eight-city tour. He's going on a six-city tour this year to different um, areas and regions. So those are some really high-profile events where the president's sharing the latest and greatest about the university. And um, so we're really trying to encourage people to attend more of our signature events as well. Another underrepresented area for us in the give category is to make sure that our alumni join the Phoenix Society, which is um, a planned giving society 
And some folks think that it's only meant for more senior alumni who are thinking about estate planning or the life after. Um, it, it, also <laughs> it also includes people that um, any of our alumni can actually um, participate in this, whether you have an insurance policy that you'd like to make us a beneficiary of or um, uh, other means um, listing us in your will or having the intent to list us in your will. There are a number of ways that you can join the Phoenix Society at all ages. So um, if you're interested in that, I'd be happy to talk to you more about that too. And then lastly, you know, this group is a, emblematic of this, but we're also really trying to make sure there are pathways and gateways for volunteers who would like to step up into leadership positions and to volunteer in a more significant capacity other than just, um, you know, being in like an alumni schools committee volunteer is fantastic and doing the interviews, but if you'd like to serve as the regional hub for that position or something like that, we're looking for gateways to make sure that people that want to take on more leadership roles are able to do so. Did you okay? <laughs> um, so we have, an in, we're obviously in all corners of the globe. Our alumni, parents, and friends are everywhere. Um, one of the best parts about my job too is traveling all around the country. Um, I'm joined by my international colleague, Stephanie, um, and she takes me to far corners of the world too to meet with our alumni and to get them involved. So we are in a lot of places, uh, obviously, around the world, but I wanted to also demonstrate that we are everywhere in the United States as well. We have alumni in all of these regions who, this isn't just the count of people that are involved, but this is the count of people that are engaged in what's going on with the university. I know the print is small, but it's a lot of people doing a lot of things on behalf of the institution. Um, there's no significance really to the color other than internally um, when we think about our geographic regions and the coverage with staff, this roughly falls into, the, into those categories. But. <clears throat> and then more specifically, I just wanted to demonstrate this. I mean, Illinois is one of our biggest areas, so I just wanted to demonstrate um, how people are involved. In Illinois alone, um, just to sort of... I, give some type of incline or some type of um, an example of the scope of the work that we're doing. In Illinois alone, we're hosting, um, and these are just university events that we know about. We're hosting over um, close to 500 events a year in Illinois alone to show some of the, the scope of what we're doing. And we have nearly 400 Metcalf scholarships, obviously a, <clears throat> a significant amount of donors that helped as I mentioned earlier, lead to our 40% participation, but also just the number of people that are connecting with potential students and doing interviews for us as well. This is just one state, so if you were to extrapolate this across you know, the United States or then even more so throughout the world, you could see um, the scope and size of how big our alumni association is and what people are doing on our behalf. So. So um, to further explain this, we've asked um, some of our volunteers um, to speak a little bit about, do you want to tee this up? Or do me no, go um, for it. Some of our alumni volunteers to um, share a little bit more about their experiences that have led to these kinds of significant results. Danny Kaufman is going to lead us off from Washington, D.C., so I appreciate it. It's nice seeing you. So thanks for, for joining us. Good morning, everyone. So great to see you all here. Thank you for being here. I got involved as a volunteer for the University of Chicago because another volunteer called and asked me to volunteer. I had never given it a thought, but one phone call, one volunteer reaching out to me saying, we'd like you to come to a phone-a-thon next week. Would you be interested? <laughs> and within about six months, I was running the phone-a-thon. <laughs> I also started donating to the university the same way. A volunteer, it happened to be David Broder, called and asked for a donation. I made a donation of about, I don't know, $30, which seemed like a huge amount to me at the time. But again, it, was, it got me started. It was within five years of my leaving campus, and I think it's very important to get other people involved early. Uh, I've been a lifelong volunteer since then, and it's, it's been very rewarding. But throughout my volunteer experiences, I've kept that in mind. And as I've worked with the alumni club, helping with Suzanne Verholst and others to start the University of Chicago Club of Tampa Bay, and also my uh, work with the Chicago Society for fundraising, I've tried to keep in mind the idea that 
personal outreach is really important. And picking up the phone and calling people, sometimes using email, but more likely using the phone, reaching out and making a personal contact, I think has been really vital. Thank you, Thank you Dan. Hi, I'm uh, Remy Kose, class of 2009. And uh, I, as someone pointed out earlier, I am the token young alumni for the University of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of the things that, uh, I, I started drinking the volunteer Kool-Aid uh, before I even graduated because I got involved with senior class gift here. Um, class of 2009 was, uh, not to brag too much, but class of 2009 was the first class to get over 80% participation. Uh, <laughs> That was, that was three years ago, it's, it's, it's over, but, <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> Sheldon, you're gonna have to call a lot more people, but yes. Um, and in fact, I see Luke behind him too. I wanna thank my uh, fellow uh, people on my uh, committee member, we're still on class council. So, point being, <laughs> to take things back a step, um, as, uh, Damon pointed out we had over 40% participation for young alumni last year, and my class included, like the class of 2009 had over 40% participation. And I think a lot of that um, comes from the fact that for senior class gift, we set a default. We were able to get to people while they were still at the college and help them understand why it matters. And for a lot of people, this topic of fundraising, you know, they get a little nervous. Oh, that's awkward. You have to ask for money. But I don't think it's awkward at all. It's not about asking for money. It's about helping people realize their connection to the university and use, utilizing that and helping them realize that giving to the university is something they've wanted to do the whole time. Um, that's just my sh sort of shtick on why fundraising matters and why it's actually a pretty easy thing to do. Um, but that's been my experience. If you have any questions on young alumni, please um, seek me out. But uh, Amy? So if he's a young alum, I guess I'm the old, cranky, middle-aged alum. Um, so I graduated from the law school in 2002. I did not graduate from the college, but merely another college. Um, I really enjoyed my experience at the law school and um, decided I wanted to get a bunch of my friends together to do a one-year class reunion, which we did in my condo, condo downtown. And Dean Lovemore and the, old, the Dean of Students at the time, Ellen Cosgrove, both attended. And it was really fun to get everybody together. Um, for those of you who went to the law school, we had the veggie burritos from the cafe, um, which was very extravagant and exciting evening. And so that sort of got me started getting involved with the law school. Um, I served as a mentor in the women's mentoring program and found that I really enjoyed working with the, the um, 1L women. Um, they also invited me back to speak on a couple of panels. Um, and those experiences actually led me to meeting panelists who really um, influenced um, my career going forward. Um, I also served as a Metcalf interviewer, which got me started um, volunteering with the university as a whole. Um, and then um, this woman, Monica Mori, in the Chicago Club called me and asked if I wanted to serve on the Chicago Club. Um, and um, it sounded fun, and so I started doing it. Um, I got most involved doing programs because um, I was a very junior associate at a large law firm working um, a lot a lot, a lot of hours. But I found that with planning programs, it was something where I could send people an email at 10 o'clock at night and, and still get the things organized in a way that worked for my schedule. Um, and I also got to do programs on topics that I was really interested in. So some of those were about law, some of those were about careers. Um, and through those, I got to meet great people like Jenny English, who now serves on the Alumni Board of Governors um, with me as well. And so that was kind of how I um, sort of found my place on the Chicago Club and ended up as the club president. Um, I uh, also then served as the five-year law school class reunion gift chair, um, where uh, it, it was a matter of, I had didn't done fundraising and politics before, but it was, I found that it was actually a really fun way to reconnect with classmates um, and talk about law school um, and get them to hand over their money, um, partially to get me off the phone, but um, we did a great job. Um, and then um, after I had served as the Chicago Club President, I was invited to um, serve on the Alumni Board of Governors. So I'm in my third year on the AVG. Um, I'm now the Vice President for the Engagement Committee. Um, I, I fully understand that not everyone in this room wants to be on the ABG when they grow up. Um, 
But I will say that it is a, the, the continued, there are lots and lots of different ways to be involved um, in the university, whether your career is at a point where you're super busy or whether it's at a point where you're not so busy, whether your private life is at a point where you're super busy or not so busy. Um, and I found that whatever was going on in the rest of my life, there's always a way to um, continue to be involved somehow with the university and that's the thing that I've enjoyed the most. So I also want to thank you um, from the ABG uh, for, for being here and for your service to the university in the past. Um, and um, bless you. And we know, uh, we hope that we can count on you to continue serving the university going forward. So thank you. Hello. I'm Chris Darnell, class of 92 in the college. Um, I also serve on the Alumni Board of Governors. Um, and they've renewed me for a second term, so I guess I'm doing a little bit in the right direction. But what I wanted to share with you today is more along what my experience has been like um, as a volunteer over the past 10 years, maybe now. Um, so without going through the history, I'll just share some highlights, I think. Um, Serving as a chair for the Alumni Schools Committee for me was great. Um, it was one of my initial forays back into the university after living abroad for a number of years. Um, I had disappeared off the, uh, off the map, so to speak, in Santiago, Chile, um, and benefited greatly from the Chicago boys that implemented the economic policy there. And so that really gave me, uh, an, I guess, a more worldly perspective of what the education here at Chicago has, has meant to me. And I think inspired me when I returned back to the U.S. to invest in giving back to the university. Um, the Alumni Schools Committee for me was exciting because it gave me a chance to spend time and interview high school students who wanted to come here so I could share my experiences with them and uh, hear why they were crazy enough to come to the college like myself. Um, and that, I think, opened up uh, just a lot of more enthusiastic interest for me and I don't like to do anything for too long. Um, so I've moved around. I've um, helped build the programming for the Seattle Club for a number of years to get it um, really active and, and, and increase the amount of alumni engagement. Um, I've served on the Alumni Board of Governors for a few years now. Um, and I continue to promote. Now that I've moved to the other side of the pond, I live in London now, so working very closely with the London Club. Uh, to help get their programming up uh, and, and running and to continue to, to go give and, and help. But one of the things I think for me um, that has been just inspiring is the um, Logan Arts Center. So for me as a musician playing the piano as a kid formed a rock band literally the first day on campus um, when I got here. Which I met two or three people in the same house and we started a band and I think practiced on the second or third day in the basement of the Shoreland in Music Room E. And for those of you that remember that place, um, <laughs> we made a lot of noise in there. But the transition, I think, to what we have now is just amazing. Um, you know, we, we played, I think I'll tell one quick story and then you can, maybe two stories, and then you can cut me off. So we, we did a battle of the bands um, and it was a block party out in front of the fraternity row. And, um, one of the fraternity's members' father was the chief of the, um, of the um, fire department at the time. And one of the professors came out. We were making a lot of noise. I mean, it was really loud that afternoon. And one of the professors came down and started complaining about the noise level. I won't mention his, his name. Um, and so he called the police, right? <laughs> and the police came out. This is not the first time I've been, the police have been called when I've been playing rock and roll. But this one was interesting. So the police stood there for a while and they, you know, the, one of the guys came out with a permit and said, you know, we've got a permit to, to do this. And they kind of muddled it over for five or ten minutes and the professor was still pretty cranky and grumpy about it all. And then the, the police came back about five minutes later and they said, um, hey guys, why don't you get back up on stage and keep playing. So that's the first time that the police has told me to actually get back up on stage <laughs> um, and play. And needless to say, I, I didn't enroll in that professor's classes for the rest of my term <laughs> at the college. But um, what I also wanted to share with you is that the transition for me, my 20th reunion was this, um, was this summer, spring. And all of the members of the band that I played with in college, we were all class of 92, came back. And I had a crazy idea of calling up a few people at the Logan Center to see if we could 
use one of the rooms. And there's a particular room that I like. It's called the rock room. It's triple insulated. The floor's raised. Um, you can turn it up to 11, and it ju <laughs> you just cannot hear anything outside. So I felt like that was a perfect, uh, perfect place to do it. So what I thought I'd share with you, just briefly, if I can get this to work, is our manager, and we had a manager back then, not that we made any money doing what we did and that we were any good, so you're going to have to excuse the quality of the fact that we haven't played together in 20 years. Come on. Will it, no, will it go? And I work for the company that makes this technology. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's not a lie. So I'll just, I'll just play a snippet of this. So the, the, you have to appreciate the fact that this, we haven't played together in 20 years, so it's going to be a little rusty. <laughs> This is the rock room, and this was, um, we got together Saturday at about noon with a little bit of whiskey, and we sat down and played all afternoon, and uh, got a few songs back to, um, to, to snuff. This is Chris Costello, he lives here in, uh, in uh, Chicago, Jamie Kiefer also in, in Chicago, uh, Will Sheckle, who's a bass player, um, lives in, uh, in New York, and there's Jorge Saltero. And Mark Beckham, who you can't see, they're all classmates of mine. And then towards the end of the day, and you'll start if they pans up, pans over a little bit, you may be able to see. Um, we had about 30 of our classmates turn up, and they just shoveled in the room, and we sat and played a half an hour of uh, half an hour of music for them. And then Bill Michael did a nice tour for us to go through the Logan Center. So this has been for me just absolutely outstanding. Being able to come back and do these types of things now as an alumni is just fabulous. It's just been an absolute pleasure. And so for me, if I'm gonna give money, this is what I give it to because I love the arts and it's just been a fantastic experience. So for all of you as alumni, use the center, it's great. We've already broken it in, we didn't break the windows, we turned it up really loud, nobody complained, so it was, it was fantastic. So I just wanted to, uh, Thank you all for coming out today, and I uh, look forward to spending some time with you through the course of the day. Thank you. Well, as you can see, we have some very committed alumni, and we count you among them. Um, you wouldn't be here today if you didn't have a real affinity for the university, and we very much appreciate that. But I'm going to finish with a couple quick things, and then we'll have time for some questions and answers. But a couple people have mentioned the Alumni Board of Governors. I'm just going to spend two quick minutes on that, because when I was asked to be on the Alumni Board of Governors, I'd never heard of it. And I think there are other of my fellow members who had a similar experience. And so one of our challenges is to make sure that the alumni community knows that there is a group of fellow alums who are advocating on your behalf. You know, one of the things we do is advise the Alumni Association. So for example, we had our fall meeting yesterday and Damon came to the group and said, here are three things that we as the Alumni Association are thinking about. We need your feedback on this. You know, what are the things that we're doing well? What are the things we could do better? What ideas do you have to make the alumni experience uh, even more valuable. So that's one of our very critical roles. Advocating on your behalf is uh, certainly another one, and that's why we hold events like this, but also why it's very important that we as ABG members try to attend as many events around the country and around the world as we can, because that's the way that we get the feedback from alumni to then bring back to the university. And then finally, we do some governance work, and we have to validate our title somewhat, I guess. Um, and so, um, so we are, uh, we do govern uh, the club's affinity group. So the things where alumni come together, um, but there needs to be some structure around that, right? We, we need to have a way to say, okay, this is what makes you a club, or this is what you need to do to be an affinity group, just so everything's on a level playing field. And so we, we do do those things. But the, uh, the board is made up of 28 members from all parts of the university, from the lab school to Pritzker, the law school, the college, everything, um, and from all over the world. Chris is in London. Um, we have another member in France. Um, this year, we're rolling out a, a concept of regional advisory councils. So we will have three of those around the world to make sure that we're getting the feedback from all parts of our alumni community. Uh, so that's the Alumni Board of Governors. Um, did you have 
Anything else? No. Um, so uh, one last thing before Q and A. I just will once again. Um, anyone who is interested in learning more about the Alumni Board of Governors, our nominations chair is Greg Marecki. Can you just raise your hand? So feel free to go seek out Greg. And if you want to talk to the awards chair about the different awards categories, Katrina, can you raise your hand? Katrina's in the back, so please go see her. So thank you very much, and now we'll open up to questions and answers. Oh, and one more thing. Sorry, as I was just prompted. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> sorry. It's my, it's my first year as president. Um, Laura did a great job. Um, we do want you to be very involved today. And so, so I, you know, your charge as attendees at Volunteer Caucus is really take advantage of the sessions today. Find something that fits with your passion because that's the thing that you're going to be the most involved with and want to give the most time and energy to. So hopefully today we have these four different tracks. So hopefully there's something that really fits with what your interests are. But I also challenge you a little bit and encourage you to maybe go to a session for something that you're a little uncomfortable with or something you don't know a lot about because you may find that that's something that does speak to you. So um, with, that, with that, I did my job and we'll open it up to questions and answers. <laughs> yes. My name is Mary Gustavos. I'm a 98 alum, and I'm pretty involved, as I think most people here are. I organize one of the affinity groups. But I don't have an understanding of the structure of all of the different organizations. All the, like, I hear class council, I hear local presidents, I hear, mm -hmm. and I, I think I've spent like a fair amount of time kind of investing in the university over the last few years, and I don't have any idea of what like, the different opportunities or needs are. Is there some sort of chart, organizational program, something that you can show and provide or share with us that says, like, you know, this is what you can do and how? Because I, I think every time I attend something, I hear about something else that <laughs> is interesting or may have been a better fit than something else I've worked on in the past. No, absolutely. It's a, it's a great question. And I think because the alumni community is constantly evolving and growing, and we're trying to figure out ways to meet the needs of that community. So for example, affinity groups is a great example. A couple years ago, we didn't have affinity groups. And what we found was, particularly in the graduate, mostly in the graduate divisions, but to some degree in the professional schools and the college, that people don't always affiliate with their class year. Right? So I'm class of 90. But you know, I had a lot of friends in 91 or a lot of, in 89, but I'm also, you know, I do different things professionally or I have different personal interests. And so I may want to affiliate based on those interests. And we found that that was fairly common. So it, it really, for the most part, got kicked off with the Bio Life Sciences Affinity Group, so which has uh, chapters in many cities around the country. But what they found was not only did it bring together people who had a, a direct interest in bio life sciences as scientists, but people who did that as part of their law profession or their banking profession or just had an interest in it. And so, so I think as the alumni community continues to evolve, we'll continue to figure out ways to meet those needs. But you're absolutely right in that as it grows, we need a good way to communicate what all those opportunities are. We've started to do that by trying to get everything on the website, so the Alumni and Friends website. And certainly, you know, and this group is not shy about telling us when technology doesn't work. And <laughs> we've had that conversation for a couple of years. And so you know, as we start to roll out better technology, that will certainly help. But you make a good point, and we need to make it easy for alums to understand what those opportunities are. And uh, you know, I think that's a great charge for us to do and, and make that a little bit easier. So thank you. Do you have anything you wanted to add to that? Um, I just the only thing I would add is that we have on our the alumni and friends website spots where people can find information about. Um, it's not organized as well as we would like, and that's our next version of it. But we do have information about the different ways that you can get involved. Our hope one day is to sort of have a, a little bit more of a questionnaire. So if you know, with some inputs, you could tell us how much time you would like to volunteer and what kind of things you would like to do and then we could make a more customized recommendation for you and we're headed in that direction but we don't have it done yet. But we do have a list of volunteer opportunities available online. Mm -hmm. And the, um, you know, and again this is a small step, but we do have the, uh, the tables out here in the hallway that talk about some of those different opportunities and those people will be around all day as well. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I know it's early. Yes. In your, thank you. In your slide where you showed the um, uh, statistics of the uh, percentage of alumni who have donated, I think you were making the point about 40% with the uh, aim of uh, goal of reaching 50% in a few years. 
Um, I sort of wondered what the denominator was because uh, it seemed a little low to me. Can you comment on how that was derived and uh, what, what's the basis for that number? Sure, and, there, and there's a couple of things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off. Um, so there's, there's two, and it is a little confusing, there's two 40% numbers. So the one 40% number is um, graduates of the college who have donated. Um, and the, the big thing, the big message there is very few colleges have give at such a high level. In fact, there's really probably only two that give at much higher levels. Um, so that's one of those 40% numbers. The other 40% number is engagement, and that's among all university graduates. And that's where our goal is to be at 50% by fiscal year 2016. And so that is the people who go give and help. As Damon said, it is probably underrepresented simply because we don't always have the systems in place to capture everyone who goes to everything. So say for example, we have a huge alumni base in Singapore, but uh, do we get feedback from every event in Singapore to know who went to every event? You know, actually they're pretty organized, so we probably do. But, um, <laughs> but in, in many cases, you know, that isn't the case. And part of our job is to make sure that, that volunteers have the, the tools to make it easy to get that information back to us. Um, but part of that is we need really organized volunteers, and so that's part of why we're here today is to spread best practices about how to do those things. Um, but in sp specifically how that number is calculated, I can leave that it just kind of how you calculate that 40% number? So on the 40%, oh. <coughs> on the 40% for the, um, for the, oh, that's better. <laughs> on the 40% for the, for the giving um, for the college alumni, there are some calculations um, that are pretty hefty that go into figuring out what the denominator is. It's sort of a shared um, US News and World Report is one of the agencies with which we work on reporting this information. So we go by their calculations of what you would include in the denominator. The numerator is pretty easy. It's if someone's made a gift or not. Um, but the denominator is whether they can be reached and if they have correct address information and so forth. On the engagement side, it's the only requirement really is that you're alive to be <laughs> captured into the, <laughs> into the denominator there. So if you're with us still on Earth, then we count you as, as <laughs> our, one of our alums. Actually, um, the definition of an alum, though, at the University of Chicago, too, is pretty broad reaching. So if you've completed one quarter of study here, you're technically an alum. So we do, um, depending on what we're calculating, um, we have different ways of deciding if we're going to just mark it to people that have a degree that was granted to them from the university or if they have an affiliation with, uh, with a place. So, sure. Oh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, hi, I'm Ann Brennan. Actually, uh, Pam and I are here as part of a new initiative. We're on the parents' committee. We chat. Pam has two children here, undergraduate. I just had one graduate, and I've got a third year student. So, I was curious with that new initiative, how much do the parents? Give. I'm, I'm speaking here about the undergraduate parents, but I was right. just curious because isn't this initiative about four or five years old? I think it's been pretty successful. The parents program? Yeah, so yeah. I was just curious where that stands in terms of. Yeah, I mean, normally, so we have, when we address the, all of our constituents for the university, we usually say alumni, parents, and friends. So we have a number of people that are affiliated with the university, particularly with the hospital where we have grateful patients and sometimes ungrateful patients, but mostly grateful patients <laughs> that are associated with the institution, but we're also trying to um, engage parents. We are primarily focused because, um, as you can imagine, it's sort of um, easier, I guess, to, to say, to organize our undergraduate parents because we, they typically have a much more involved um, experience with their students on the undergraduate level than they do on the graduate level, but we're also working with our graduate um, parents as well for those who would like to be involved. The a couple of main initiatives that we're trying to do with our undergraduate parents is to provide opportunities for volunteerism, gateways for philanthropy if someone's interested in you know, supporting beyond the tuition what they would like to um, see improve at the university. We're, we're very much focused on that too. Um, but also it's really a way through um, you know, we host these big signature events, as I mentioned, like Harper Lectures and other things. We're hosting Family Weekend, the last weekend of October, and we spend a lot of time and resources on that. And so we need our parent groups um, to try to encourage more people to come back and take advantage of some of the programming that we're doing and ha have an active involvement in their students' experience here. So. so do you have any statistics on the giving? Uh, I, I, 
Well, we've seen a 30% increase in parent giving over the past five years. Yeah, so if you base it against where we were <laughs> five years ago, it's about 30% more than what the parents were giving before, so. When you say giving, does that, is that a donation made or is that someone who spends 20 or $30 to attend an event? Does that number go into it? We only, um, we only count on the, on the giving side something that you would get a tax receipt for. So it could be that you registered for an event and it was $50 and you gave us an additional $50 as part of the registration. Then we would count the additional $50 as a gift. But we don't account um, event registrations as part of gifts. Or if you purchase a sweatshirt at the bookstore, we don't count that sort of thing. It's just a gift. I'd like to, but we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? All right, great. Well, we will be around all day. Um, we very, again, appreciate you being here. Um, one quick thing, if you are going to making it